All right, this video is for the second of two navigation widgets that now come with the complete set of Equid widgets. This one is the overlay widget, and this one's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go over this widget in the same way that I did the last one. On the right, we have all the menu options that were chosen for this example, and on the left, we have the actual example. So starting with the toggle options, we have remove the default cart. That will remove the default cart if you're not wanting the shopping cart to show up on whatever page that you have the menu widget on. This is also for if you are wanting to use one of the custom cards that come with the complete set of widgets. Add menu text. So if you choose to toggle this on, then you're able to add text that will go next to this menu. Add menu icon. If you toggle that off, then you can remove the menu icon and then just have the menu text. Animate icons. This is actually for when the widget is activated. So I'm just gonna show you that real quick. When you click on the navigation, See how the arrows bounce? That is because this is toggled on. So if you don't want those to bounce, then you just turn that off. Then the menu icon, you have, I believe it's 10 different options. Let me double check. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, 10. So you have 10 different options and you can go through those. I will also create a page that you can see more of the icon options. Um, but yeah, so you have 10 different icons and then right here you can change the color of the icon for each state. This will also change the text if you have menu text activated. So in this example, I have it going from a darker to a lighter gray. So as you can see, it's doing that. The font and icon size. So all the icons that I use, they're custom font icons that I've created. So they work in the exact same way as Font Awesome. So when you increase the font size, it increases the icon size. So if you have the font size set to 50 like I do and you have menu text activated, then the size of the text is also going to be 50 pixels. Navigation width. I have it set to 300. That is this distance right here. That is how far the menu actually crosses over. Remove categories. You can remove up to four categories and if you would like to remove any of the main categories you can do so by opening up the category that you'd like to remove and then going up to the URL and you just want to copy the numbers that follow the C and then the forward slash. So in this one it's 3002 I'm just going to show you real fast. If I choose to remove one category and I choose 3002, then when I preview this widget, let's see. So we were removing the downloadables section. So when I open the widget, it should remove the downloadables section. And it did. The transition animation, that adjusts the transition speed between each state. So from normal to hover and hover to active or mouse down, it will take 0.3 seconds if you leave it just at the default. And then the menu height, that will adjust how tall each menu item is. Menu divider width, the thin gray lines that you're seeing that separating each menu item, that is adjusted by the menu divider width. If you'd like to remove that, just set the menu divider width to zero. Font size, it's set to 18 pixels. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now the menu font color, you can adjust the normal hover and active state and the transition speed will adjust how long it takes to go from each state. Now the menu divider color, as you may have saw, when I hover over each menu item, that gray line turns into a red line and that's because I've set it up to do that in the widget. That's why it's turning red. And then lastly, the background color. So whatever you set the background color to be will adjust this main background color. And then for the hover and active state, it will adjust the colors that you have when you hover or click on each menu item. Okay, so lastly is the font type. You might have just noticed that some parts of the widget just changed. And that's because when I went to go change the font type, I realized that the way that I had it set up wasn't working. So unfortunately, instead of using the text tool to change the font type on the overlay navigation, you're going to have to manually enter it. 
So the way that you manually enter the font type into the widget is you take the name of the font type, so for example, Open Sans, and you make it all lowercase, and then any spaces are replaced with a hyphen. So Open Sans looks like this, and so you need to type it in like this. Then the font family, that is just the fallback font. So I'm sure that most of you know what the font family is, but for example, Times New Roman, that is a serif font. And then Courier, that is monospace. So I'm going to show you an example of what you would do if you were using a different font. So let's say we're using Prestige Elite Standard. So then you would type in Prestige Elite STD, like that. And then you have to set this to monospace. And the font weight, you can just leave it at normal for this one. Then when you export that into the browser, or preview that in the browser, I mean, see, everything changes. Now I'm just going to show you one more example. Let's say that you're wanting to use Open Sans Lite. So what I recommend doing is always making sure that you change the actual widget. So select the widget and then click the text tool and then go to the font type that you're wanting to use. But since that usually alone will not work, you open up the widget and then, for example, for with Open Sans Lite, you enter Open Sans, but you do not enter light. Anything that has to do with bold, medium, basically the weight of the font, you do not enter that into the font type. So you just leave it as Open Sans, then change the font family to Sans Serif, because Sans Serif is for fonts like Arial. And then the font weight, you're going to want to change that to something lighter than normal. So any one of these four will usually work. Most of the time it's 300 for any lighter version of a font. So I'm going to go with that one. So you will have to try it out on whatever font that you're using because it's not always going to be 300. So unfortunately I couldn't make it any easier than that, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be too difficult. So I selected 300. And then when you preview that in the browser, it's now set to Open Sans Lite. So that is the overlay navigation.